video was shot before I got a good microphone set up and so it's shot without audio and so I'm going to do a voiceover for this one. So here we have the boost converter. This is the topology and we're going to look at it in DCM. Remember the inductor is at the input here so let's look at the current waveform for that. First in DCM it's going to go up to a peak value and then it's going to come back to zero and while it's decreasing in current we call that time dA times T. So that's the sub-period essentially. And this is in discontinuous conduction mode. And we know that that average value is going to be the same as the average input current. So with those definitions we want to find the relationship between the output voltage and those terms. And we're going to do that by first looking at a power balance. So we know that the input power has to be equal to the output power. And this assumes that there are zero losses in our system. So the input voltage times the input current is input power. And that's going to be equal to the output power. And here we can look at the power through the resistor. So we can define the output voltage over the resistor. And the power through that is going to be V squared over R. The input current is not one of our defined terms, so we need to replace that and put it in terms of things that we know. So we recognize that the input current is equivalent to the inductor current, the average values of both of those. So we can find the average value by looking at the triangle, so one half base times height divided by the time, that's the amount of charge going through it, and then divided by its whole period over t. So one half, and then the d is the on time d plus the decreasing d, the d sub a, times t, times the peak value. We get some terms that cancel out, and we have some new terms that we still need to replace. So d a and i peak need to be put in terms of things that we know. So to figure out i peak, we can look at the inductor equation. And we know that v equals l d i d t, we can change it into deltas. Then we can look at the delta i, and we're going to try to match that delta i to the peak value. So we rewrite that as delta i equals v delta t over l. Then we replace the values that we wanted to find out. So i peak is the value we're looking for, and then we have input voltage during t and t over l. So now that's the i peak value. Now we need to find dA, and we can use the same equation, the same inductor equation, so let's write that again. And now we're going from I peak down to zero. So our change in current is actually a negative peak, and this time the dT is actually going to be dA times T. Another difference is the voltage over the inductor during this phase when the switch is on is actually V in minus V out. So we plug all those values in and we do some math. After writing everything out here and moving everything around, changing the dA by itself, We cancel a bunch of things out. Then we get this expression for the dA term. Now we can replace dA with this value and I peak with this value. So let's substitute those in. We can write in the dA value here. And for I peak, we can write in this expression. 
And now we simplify. Let's move that term over to the front and take the d out, so we're squaring the d there. And now we have what's in the parentheses. And the negative is coming from the negative b in. So from here, we can simplify this expression a little bit more. We're putting everything under one denominator. And then we'll simplify some terms, which we'll cross out. And my ghost hand will write the final expression here. And in the parentheses, it's been simplified significantly to a negative v out over vi minus vo. So now we can take this expression we found and put it back into the average input current for the power balance equation. So let's substitute that in here. And then we put the output power side of the power balance equation. Cross out a V out on both sides. And now we want to solve for V out in terms of everything else. So we can move the denominator, the Vn minus V out, over from left to the right. Move the negative to the front of the coefficient term on the left side. Then we're going to move the r term from the right to the left side. And we distribute the v out over the two terms. And now let's move everything from the right side to the left side of the equation and write everything out. And this is all equal to 0. Now we have to do the quadratic equation on the output voltage to determine its value. So put all these terms in for the quadratic equation. And once everything is written, you use the math magic and simplify everything. The two negatives here become a positive. We can simplify some of the terms of 4 divided by 2 becomes just a 2. Then we can actually bring this vi squared out of both terms and bring it to the front outside of the square root. And it's just vi by itself. We squeeze our terms in here, and that's the full equation for the output voltage. But we have two values, a positive and a negative. But we know the negative doesn't make sense, so we just keep the positive value. So here is the output voltage for a boost converter operating in DCM with a resistive load.